Greetings YouTube, Alan Lou back with another video. It has been a while since I've made a video, but um, yeah, and you know, just after the Pro Tour and RTN season, it was just like a long grindy season of Flesh and Blood. And so taking some time off uh, during that time from videos, you know, I still try to uh, write posts on my Patreon, whether I'm, talk about, I'm talking about tournaments I'm going to or the metagame, things as a whole, stuff like that. Like, I'm still playing in events. I went to Age, um, top four that one. I played one Pro Quest this past weekend, and I split the finals in that one. So overall, still performing well, but uh, I've definitely been feeling a bit, I don't know, disenchanted with the current meta, I guess, a little bit. Um, and that I wouldn't really say, I don't, I'm not really sure why, to be quite honest. Um, I don't think, like... I think there's definitely a lot of room for me to improve as a player, but it's just like, I don't know, feeling a bit of a, a plateau, I guess I feel like sometimes, but uh, moving on from that, I wanted to talk about this upcoming ProQuest meta that we're going to have now that Droma is gone. And, you know, if we look at the ProQuest results from this past weekend, Droma way on top. Um, is that because she is one of the best decks? Probably so. Is that also because this was the last weekend to play Dromai, so everyone who wanted to play her or even owns her deck uh, decided to bring her to Pro ProQuest? Maybe that's part of it too. Uh, Ko in second, I found quite interesting because it definitely felt like Ko was a bit on the downtrend, especially as like um, maybe with Dromai leaving, other decks that can potentially counter him fairly well start rising up. But I guess that won't really be. Tr I guess that won't really happen until next week when Dromai's gone. I would be pretty surprised if KO was the number one performer in week two, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, Dorinthia in third, quite convincingly. Not super surprising either, especially after the great showing she had at the Pro Tour. We're seeing her in a lot of battle hardens and things like that. Hatchets are really popular. Uh, Prism in fourth, I found very surprising. Um, I think just the fact that maybe more decks, excuse me, more deck lists are going public. You know, people are seeing how strong she is and looping, all that stuff. There's the whole ALS deba debate on Twitter. And uh, for my quick thoughts on it is I don't really care. Um, I've been playing around AS ALS since, not playing around, but I've been playing against that card basically since I started playing the game. It's just part of the game, you know. Uh, and now that there's a whole loop factor to it, whatever. Uh, Victor, not too surprising either. Did pretty well at the, you know, both the calling and the PT. We use uh, Blue Pitch, Shing uh, posted his list on Twitter. Um, Dennis Zhang, who topped the calling, also posted his list. So Victor definitely in high regard right now. Azalea moving up. Uh, Brody won the calling in Phuket on Azalea. And a lot of people are trying out his list as well with the amplifying arrows. A lot of, like, no blues, basically, except for Nock. And it's basically, like, I don't know, Cheerio Azalea. Katsu, still, still there. Kasai, I found a bit surprising. I feel like Kasai was probably... Um, and it's funny because if you watch Arsenal pass you, I'll see that how Hayden Dale talks about, um, Kasai being one of his top decks for this upcoming meta. And, um, you know, I don't always agree with their takes, but for, I do think Kasai actually has a lot more game than what current results suggests. Um, I would even surmise that she's a better deck than Dorinthia, but, um, don't want to dig into that too much. Kano's on the downtrend. Maybe that's because of the uptrend of Prism or stuff like that. But uh, as more people started to pack hate, we're definitely not seeing him perform as well. And then we have the other heroes, Bravo, Leviathan, Max, Reinar, Bolton, Dash, Azuri, Visrai. Um, more niche decks, you know, some wins here and there. Maybe I could have gotten Bravo onto the list if I didn't split the finals. And maybe he would have had three wins. I don't know if he had one or two, but because this just appears to be... No, this isn't alphabetical, so maybe. But um, not a huge deal. Uh, not not too surprised with this current ProQuest results. I think things will shift a lot once Dromai is gone, but at the same time, that almost doesn't even really matter because part the Misfail is coming out very soon, and that might change a lot of things about the meta. Three new heroes, Enigma, Nu, and Zen, they could shake up the meta quite dramatically. We saw how powerful of a set Heavy Hitters was, and, you know, considering... You know, all the effort and all the promotional stuff, you know, Japan premiere. I feel like Part the Miss Veil is kind of going to probably be a, another banger set. So this is going to be quite a short-lived meta, this little ProQuest meta. But, you know, if you're trying to go to Amsterdam, which I unfortunately probably will not be going, um, that's another part of the reason that I split was because I don't realistically think that I could go. Um, 
but yeah, that's going to be another big event to look forward to. I'll probably just be watching it at home. Uh, we had a couple Battle Hardens. Um, Dromai, Azalea, Levia, Kasai. I don't, battle Hardens are, are quite niche. Um, like Vincent, for example. Um, maybe Vincent's good. I don't know. Could just be a lucky day and a lucky event. Um, but overall, meta isn't too surprising. But um, this is still with Dromai. So once Dromai is gone, things will shake up maybe a little bit. So let's get into that. Oh, and I forgot to say, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It's quite late right now. And uh, I decided to finally get this video out because I've been slacking on it. I actually recorded this video before ProQuest weekend, but um, I decided to just re-record it because I feel like I changed my mind on some stuff. So let, let me just run through some meta decks because obviously KO is meta, Dory's meta, Kasai is meta, uh, who else is meta? Prism's meta, Azalea's meta, Katsu's meta. Um, yep, that's probably all the quote unquote meta decks that I would say. Also, I'm not really splitting this up ASAB in the usual way. Like, for example, Niche, I don't think is a worse tier than decks that are on the rise. Obviously, decks that are on the rise are on the rise because Dromai's gone, and that's going to be a big part of, you know, um, how they perform in the meta. But on the rise decks, I would consider like um, Azuri, maybe. Um, maybe Viscera is a bit on the rise recently. Uh, Max is potentially on the rise. Oh, Victor's meta. Forgot about him. Um, maybe these three. I'm not sure. Let me run through uh, the heroes real quick just to give my overall thoughts on them. KO, you know, just a good numbers deck. Not really anything too crazy there. Dory, also a good numbers deck. Kasai, I think, is arguably better than Dory. Um, once people started to play around gold more rather than um, blood on our hands with silver, I think Raisin Army is like people are starting to catch on to just how powerful of a card that is. Obviously, against like, you know, KO, you don't really need to raise an army. You just play your efficient numbers game and you whittle them down from there. You block efficiently, you attack efficiently. It's the same warrior game plan as Hatchets. Um, maybe Hatchets is more favored into KO um, than Kasai, like Hatchet Dory. But, you know, you're still favored and you have more game into very long matchups like victor or potentially bravo or teclo things like that and so i think that's a big reason why kasai gets a bit of an edge there and i do think that against like some of the very fast decks like maybe azalea or katsu maybe you have a bit more high roll potential i'm not really sure on that one because dory with hit and run when they're not blocking is very efficient and very consistent um whereas you know an, an aggressive deck like azalea or katsu will need to like find their efficient turns and damage quickly against dory um kasai you have a bit of a higher ceiling with your spoils of war if they don't block and then you get an early blood on her hands and you explode for more damage compared to dory so i think dory probably just has the edge there in terms of consistency but you know the ceiling is present for kasai it's just less consistent of course because you need to find the spoils of war and then blood on her hands uh prism is definitely on the rise with dromai gone she's going to be the new illusionist sort of policing certain decks um, she polices Kano a lot better than Dromai did. Um, obviously, she'll have great matchups into like maybe Teclo or um, other warriors maybe uh, with her auras and things like that. Even heralds are quite potent into warriors. You know, people don't really tech seven power poppers that much. And so Prism definitely has some stocks there. I do think that Prism probably is worse at beating Guardians than Dromai was, which is kind of a weird thing to say, but... That's just my initial reaction of that. Um, but um, who knows? Things may change. It's Guardian versus Illusionist is always a matchup that evolves a lot as people get better and better. People refine decks on both sides. People refine strategies on both sides. And it's um, one of my favorite matchups to play, honestly, even though like I quote unquote hate playing against Illusionist. It's just like the matchup is evolving so much over time. Like even against Bravo versus Dromai, like from when she came out to when she finally LL'd, it was just like constantly. Well, and also part of that is because LSF just keeps printing Illusionist new cards every set. But, you know, that's another tangent. Let's not go there. But yeah, I think Prism will be interesting. Um, we're already seeing a lot of results with her and people love Illusionist. So you expect to see a lot of her. Uh, Azalea, strong deck, um, disruptive attacks. Not quite fragile, but, you know, you don't really need to block too much if you are locking your opponent out of the game or dealing, you know, 20 damage turns with Death Dealer and you line up four or five pumps with an arrow. Katsu, also very uh, aggressive deck. Links triple bonds, lots of damage. 
overall decent matchup spread. Um, yeah, nothing too much there. Just two hyper aggressive decks. Katsu is a bit more on the damage side. Azalea a bit more on the um, disruptive on hit style. Um, and Victor is the better guardian, honestly, at this point. And you know what? Let's talk about Bravo. I'm gonna put Bravo in niche. Um, whenever I look at you know tournaments and I see how many people are playing Bravo and I see like zero or one, it makes me a little sad. But most, uh, I think, almost everyone just prefers. Not everyone. A lot of Guardian players prefer playing Victor, and he's simply the better Guardian deck at the moment. Mainly because I think Victor just has so many, so much, so many more points into the Warrior matchup with Test of Strength and Trounce. And then even against Brute, he has a bit of a better time because, excuse me, as Bravo, you need to put push on hits through to really get value. And Brutes just have crazy fridges that realistically, in most games, that doesn't happen. Like, as Bravo, you have to chew through their armor, and then your attacks like Crippling and Spinal or Pummels or wherever will finally start connecting, and then you can, like, gain value from there. Whereas Victor, you just need to block, win some, win some tests of strengths, and then, you know, you draw a card, and you're good to go from there. And you have, you know, all the good Guardian card pool. You don't have Crippling, you don't have Starstruck, and those are, you know, two good cards, even versus... or. Even Starstruck is good against Brute, right? Because they can't just one card block it. Well, they could and they play Swing Big, but, you know, in most situations. So overall, Victor just has more points into Warrior and Brute, in my opinion. Um, but Bravo, I feel like, has more points into, like, Katsu, Azalea, Prism a little bit. Um, there are matchups where Bravo is a little better, but... If you want to aggregate the meta and put like assigned win probabilities towards all of them, Victor probably just has like a better spread, is more consistent. But you know, it is what it is. I'm not too mad about it. I don't think Bravo is a bad hero by any means, but uh, just the representation just isn't there, which is a bit unfortunate. But maybe it's also a good thing because I get to play Bravo for a nice long time. Um, all right, let's move on to some decks that are on the rise. I think Azuri's on the rise. Um, I'm fairly confident that Azuri can be favored into KO. Azuri has some game into the Warriors. Um, things like Scale Peeler is annoying for them to deal with, and um, you have Already Dead, and things like that. But uh, I guess I guess technically Arachne is a little bit on the rise too, if you wanted to count that. Um, but um, it's weird because Azuri can, can tech to be a lot of things. Even against Guardian, you know, Azuri can still get there. It's not like the worst matchup in the world. And Dromai was your worst matchup in the world before this. Um, I think even Prism, you can you can beat if you, you know, spend five, six, seven, eight, nine sideboard slots, maybe. You can get there. But yeah, Azuri is definitely on the rise. And for the same reason Arachne has been on the rise, I think most people would just prefer to play Azuri. She has, you know, evasive disruption, which is really annoying to play against. Whereas Arachne just has more contract style stuff. And, you know, if... Arachne is technically on the rise, so I'll put him there. Viscerai is also on the rise, you know, uh, ever since uh, John did uh, pretty well at the PT and other Viscerai players too, um, the aggro Viscerai deck has been coming back, and some people are on, like, the Shrill, Reaping Blade stuff, and Tome of the Ark Knight, whereas other players are on, like, the Pummel Slogism stuff. Um, I have no opinion on which one is better, because I don't play Viscerai, and he's pretty niche, so I haven't even played against him in a long time. Like, the only recent games I've played against Viscerai were against John, and he was, like, testing out OTK, which was pretty hard for me to beat, honestly. Like, I think I won, like, one game and lost, like, three. But, you know, so if, if you play OTK, you can probably beat a lot of decks. You can probably beat the Guardians, the Brutes, the Warriors. Well, maybe Brutes a little iffy, and Azalea and Katsu are iffy, and you probably auto-lose to uh, Prism. But, you know, aggro Viscerai, you just, you know, hopefully high roll deal some damage call it a day max is interesting as well because um i don't think max was particularly very good in a dromai um but because kyloria could be annoying steal your hyper drivers i'm pretty sure but um you know with brute and warrior um in high representation in the meta you can definitely just like spend more time building your nitro mechanoid well i guess brute has item destruction which is also very annoying but uh, with Dromai gone, Mechanologist in general is a bit on the rise. Um, I'll even throw Dash in there. Um, so all these decks I find quite interesting and potentially could come up into the meta a bit. But I think of all of these, Azuri is probably the only one that I expect to have like a large breakout out of all of these heroes. And part of that is due to play rate, of course. But I think just like 
the hero as a whole and the meta as a whole, I think Azuri has the most argument for like moving up into the meta tier. Whereas, you know, Teclo is niche, Arachne is niche, Max is niche. Dash is kind of just still in like a okay-ish spot. Like Dromai wasn't really a good matchup for Dash. So that's partially good. But I don't particularly think Dash is going to be super amazing into the meta either. Um, same ish for Max. I'm not sure. Viscerai, I think people are just, you know, hopping on because people like playing Viscerai and people see other people doing, other people doing well with Viscerai. So it's, uh, people, it's good. Bolton is good, but I think he's also quite niche right now. Um, you know, I think against the Warriors, it's awkward if you play a Raiden style. So maybe you go switch and you have Raiden and Sabres, or maybe you're a pure Sabres player and no Raiden it's it's weird uh, i think bolton has a lot of potential to be explored but i wouldn't really and bolton i get i don't know maybe bolton's on the rise because he had a bad matchup in a dromai also i don't know it's weird I, I could just put like every hero into on the rise because a lot of heroes had bad matchups in a dromai but um overall i still think bolton's pretty niche i mean i would i think dash is pretty niche too um and then dash io is niche um fairly aggressive deck she can do cool stuff with her items but um, her worst matchup is Guardian and probably Azuri and maybe even Azalea by like a pretty wide margin. So not sure how that will go fair for her in the upcoming meta, but I don't, I don't think she's a bad hero at all. Uh, Fi, honestly, I think Fi is an expansion slot waiting room hero. Uh, like I can't imagine him being particularly relevant like maybe he has like the same feel as Viscerai, whereas like once one person, you know, releases a deck that performs very well, he'll become more popular and he's not as bad as people think. But the way things currently stand, I honestly just feel like he needs something and uh, he's just not quite there. I think Kano is also niche. Um, he saw a big burst in the RTN season and, you know, he did top it. He, w he was in top eight at the PT. He got second at the calling um, with Caleb. And overall, he performs very well, but in, again, I wouldn't really consider him like a meta-meta hero. Um, it's still something you have to consider when you're deck building, whether, you know, how much AB you run, how much spell void you run, things like that, if you run Oasis, etc. But yes, I don't, I wouldn't really put him in the meta tier. Leviathan, I'm going to put in niche too. I think most, when I, I don't know, when I, pull, after, ugh, my words are not coming out. Uh, when Heavy Hitters first came out and I was testing games against Leviathan, like some ceilings uh, from her were just so crazy that I respected her as a deck a lot but just also seeing like other games where like she just kind of dies to herself or she has like a one bad turn and it's kind of over I think in pro quest it's fine um, but in a longer tournament I wouldn't expect um, Leviathan to really pop off and that's just the nature of the hero I guess a little bit um, I don't really I'm not really sure how much you know like deck tuning or things like that would fix that um, I think Mansant, rightfully so, talks about like, you know, if enough people put in the reps and uh, brought Leviah to a larger event, she would see more success. But I think that would go for just about for a lot of heroes in the game. Um, and in general, a lot of the top players prefer to play more consistent decks and Leviah just isn't that, unfortunately. But she's not a bad hero. She's quite she's quite strong. Uh, Reinar, also pretty niche. Um, I don't really think this is the right meta for him at the moment. It's not like very blocky blocky stuff like obviously the brutes have game into prism because of gamblers or because of game or scab skins and arc light sentinel stuff and that's why prisms run gamblers gloves now so they can re-roll your uh your scabs and things like that but overall i just think it's kind of eh, it's okay um uh, they have good game into prism reiner can i don't know if he even really has a good matchup outside of that other than just hopefully you draw your blood rush bellows and you do your thing um moving on we have riptide I don't know. Honestly, I would put Riptide in the expansion slot waiting room section. I think Warriors probably can just out grind him. Guardian can out grind him. He probably has an okay matchup into KO, into Azalea, into Katsu, but I don't know. I think there are probably some Riptide believers out there, and rightfully so. Like there's there's obviously something to the deck. I see it perform well here and there, but I would consider him another expansion slot waiting room car or hero. Vincent, probably the same. I know Vincent just topped the battle hardened, but until I see more, I'm not really going to put too much stock into that. And then Betsy and Olympia are also in the expansion slot waiting room. Like Hatchet Dory is just 
better than Hatchet Olympia right now, unfortunately. And that's just because uh, people talk about payoff. Like, Up the Ante is like a pretty insane card. Like, if you ever get double Up the Ante, it's that's just a ton of value and a lot of damage out of nowhere. But overall, it's they still just need something. Betsy is just in a awful spot to be honest like there it just really feels like there's no reason to play her over either guardian the only things you have going for you are bet big and good time chapeau and good time chapeau is a really good helmet but you need to make gold to use it and there aren't really any good ways to make gold outside of bet big you don't want to run wage gold you're not going to play starting stake you can't play crown of dominion because that takes up your head spot and even if you could even if good time chapeau was like a chess piece or something like i still don't think you would run counter of dominion i mean maybe you do but uh double down's also like not a great card either for the wager in general the two wager heroes just they just don't have enough like wager so many of the wager cards block two in limited and because of that you can't really play them in cc like they're just not good um like there are the three block warrior wager cards like the i think it's like edge ahead is it edge ahead? It's the one that one for three pumps and you get to wager. Um, those are like pretty decent, but nowhere near just being able to blade runner, swing your hatchet, swing your hatchet, hit and run, swing your hatchet again. So yeah, they need some help. And yeah, I would say this is probably my overall read on the meta. Once again, this isn't a tier list based on strength. Like I wouldn't put, you know, I don't think Teclo is a better hero than Dash or Kano, for example. I just think he potentially has more stock in the upcoming meta because of Dromai leaving. And, you know, that goes for a lot of heroes. Um, and, you know, if Teclo has the right run, he doesn't run into, like, Prism, Kano, uh, Azalea, Katsu. He can probably do fine. Um, but that's a good amount of decks that you got to dodge. And then, you know, Azuri. I think Azuri is probably, like, my standout hero for this upcoming meta. Just because, I mean, Warriors will be a little tough, but you have tools and you can probably get there if you can outskill your opponent enough. But unfortunately, I think probably at like the highest level between two like top players on on both sides or, you know, if you play both sides and you're a top player, then I think Warrior wins that more often than not. But, you know, that doesn't mean you can't get there as a Zuri. And yeah, I'm not really sure if I would change anything on here. This is also not really ordered either. Um, this meta honestly doesn't even really matter that much. Well, I mean, it does matter because ProQuest is important. If you need your invite for Amsterdam, then ProQuest is, you know, the best way to do it. Arguably easier than top eighting a calling or tier three event, but who knows? Uh, but yeah, that's all for me. Um, I wonder if I have any questions for you guys about this upcoming meta. Um, let's see. Nope, I don't really have any questions. I'm probably just going to do a little bit more work and go to sleep, and I will post this very soon. Thanks for watching. Um, if you disagree with me, please flame me in the comments. I will respectfully answer or not answer, depending on how hard you flame. And if you agree with what I say, then great. Uh, tell me that too, and I can, you know, heart your comment and give you a little smiley face or something. But yeah, that's all for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll hopefully be back with another video. I'm not really sure what other videos I could even do right now. It's kind of like a slower time, at least uh, in fab right now. But yeah, I will see you guys next time.